everyone this is Pontus at Björns Colorado Honey so with all this time that people seem to have on their hands these days we've been getting a lot of questions about beekeeping um, having your own bees um, if bee and just kind of general beekeeping questions and we have decided to put together a very short uh, presentation about bees and beekeeping if it was a good fit for you um, and kind of what goes into it so especially like this first episode here uh, it's gonna be very basic it's gonna talk about the cost the space um, if uh, if it's for you it's if, if it fits in your life um, what equipment you would be needing and, and so on and then it's probably gradually as we make these videos for you guys they're gonna become kind of more and more complicated and more beekeeping itself uh, I love for you guys to interact with me it's so easy for me that I've been working with bees my whole life to just kind of jump past things that um, is uh, which is just so um, just so of course in in my life but please let us know if you have any questions we're gonna put together a little video where we'll be answering all the questions that you guys have about this episode um, and anything that comes up for you guys so what we work with is honeybees they are different from other pollinators that we have na native in America and they are different from wasps they are often a little uh, little wider they're a little fluffier they kind of black and orange while the wasp has a longer body and a bigger back piece and the wasps are normally black and yellow they're kind of very different in the color scheme uh, European honeybees came from what we think either Italy or Spain and they brought was brought over to America to uh, honey production but also to pollinate uh, almond crops and watermelons and apples uh, in agricultural settings um, and that's what we're working with today honeybees are a domestic animal so it's something that we've been breeding very much like your dog or your or cows or chickens they are very different from the ones used to be so they are it's it's a farm animal today uh, they do live in bee boxes like this um, this what I have here it's called a Langstroth there's different formats of beehives but this is a Langstroth beehive most beekeepers choose to work with these but there's also um, other formats and diff other sizing um, of beehives there's uh, top bars which is uh, very common in a backyard where the bees would be working from right to left instead of up and down like in this setting here um, every beekeeper if you work with a top bar hive uh, or not knows about the Langstroth and this is every beekeeper friend that works with bees professionally have Langstroths like these and this is a styrofoam hive which I choose because of the lightness uh, it's so much lighter to carry than wood that's commonly used and it is also a little bit better insulated so both for cold winters in Colorado where we at but also for hot summers uh, they will keep the temperature a little bit better for the bees uh, so that's the reason I choose these um, they are fairly new uh, it's a pretty new invention to have uh, styrofoam like this but We've been working in with in my family we've been working with styrofoam for the last eight years or so I want to say very many people wondering if, if it makes a difference for uh, honey production and so on and not really to be honest it's it's more for the beekeeper um, the space that you would need to have a beehive uh, I want to say that you want to set away five by five feet or six by six feet that would put one hive in the center and then a little bit of walking area around it uh, you don't you don't need much space at all when I go and put the hives on uh, farmland I often ask the farmer to put me somewhere in the corner where 
they know that they're not going to use the land i take the space that no one else takes um, some people say that they you want morning sun to get them out the first thing and then a little bit of shade throughout the evening um, i personally haven't seen a, a a big difference in that um, but i think you should put them somewhere where you know that you want your beehive and just make it uh, uh, make it that how you want it is what i want to say um, if you do have your hive close to your hive house uh, or your seating area outside there will be activity so there will be bees flying around uh, and even as a beekeeper and working with bees all the time um, I don't enjoy having bees kind of flying in my face um, they rarely sting, sting you if you don't if they don't get stuck in your hair or if you don't uh, step on them bees don't want to use their stinger because when they sting they die um, but they do have stingers and that is how they protect themselves uh, but if you can and you have the option of putting them away or the back side of your property i would recommend you to do so um, but technically you could have a beehive in the city on your balcony uh, but i want to say that you probably are donating the balcony for beekeeping at that point but there's definitely is people in the middle of the city that is having bee hives or one beehive on a small balcony which is kind of neat um, there is some predators to think about uh, in colorado the biggest predator that we get here it's um, in the foothills it's gonna be bears uh, they can make terrible uh, demolition of a beehive if you know that you have beehives in your area uh, or even in your backyard and you've seen them it's just a question of time before that bear is going to try to get into your hive so uh, there's two ways of dealing with that either uh, electric fence that keeps them out or that you put them on a rooftop actually and that's something that's pretty common in Alaska uh, and that way the bears wouldn't get to your hive and it's actually not the honey that the bears like even though they do munch some of it uh, it's the brood which is the larva the, the bees themselves that's uh, what the bees are looking for uh, we do to try to keep the hive off the ground so in this case there's just two cinder blocks this is a dummy beehive that we set up just to take this shoot uh, we are going to walk over to where we have our beehive uh, in the backyard it's uh, I control I, I call it a control group it's something where I can go out and see kind of what happens in the environment around us and that way I don't have to drive uh, if it's not necessarily to but we're gonna go out here and look at very much how the backyard behind setting would look like uh, but in this case we just have some cinder blocks um, just to get them up from the ground that makes it a little harder for ants and other bugs and bugs to get in there um, same if you get grasses and, and weeds kind of growing around it it's easy to just go out and kind of weed whack it and keep that short and make it harder for bugs to get in um, in Colorado some kind of water source is amazing so just a bird bath or if you know that you have a creek somewhere in your area you don't have to worry about it but a bird bath or something where the bees can go and get um, water just put a stone or uh, a couple of branches in in the in the bird bath so the bees can easily land on that and take water home but super important just for any, as any other animal is water um, and that's also a tip if you don't want to have a beehive but you do appreciate local pollinators and pollinators uh, for a garden uh, put some water out it brings in so many beneficial uh, insects it's amazing so <coughs> we um, uh, looking here at pretty much everything that you will need for one beehive. Uh, it's going to be an uh, initial cost. Uh, it's beekeeping itself as when you have all the equipment is pretty cheap, but there is an initial cost that comes with beekeeping itself, um, together with a bee suit. Uh, some boots, some beekeeping gloves, uh, hive tools, and we're gonna go through what I have here. 
uh, you're probably looking at anything between 450 and six to seven hundred dollars uh, and that will pretty much give you everything to get bees in it will give you um, feeders and frames that we're gonna go open up and look at but it can be a general idea of the cost of uh, beekeeping uh, there is a few places um, where you can buy equipment and you can get everything locally in Colorado there's two stores that I'm aware of there's one that's called um, uh, Beyond the Hive and then there's one called Dakota Bees uh, it's called to be or not to be to be or not to be or Dakota Bees sorry to be or not to be um, both of those places are taking orders on beehives right now. At least I know Dakota bees are. And it's time, if you want to get into beekeeping, it's time to place your order right away. Pickup of bees is gonna be uh, end of April, early uh, May. Um, but you wanna call these places up. If you live outside Colorado, uh, you do want to call the local beekeeping club and they can tell you where you can get bees. Uh, in your area we'll call a beekeeper and ask them what you can get uh, online you can get equipment uh, bees are harder to get online even though they do ship but equipment like this there's a couple of uh, stores um, online one is called the dent it's a big uh, producer of bee equipping equipment as well and then you have man lake bees which is, you can also get products like this uh, and also better bee uh, but there's three sources there where you can get uh, product. Um, the time management or the amount of time that you want to put into hives uh, will vary depending on how many hives you have, of course, but also uh, how healthy they are. Uh, but I would say that you want to be ready. You should be ready to put away at least uh, three hours a month uh, per bee yard. Uh, so if you have as soon as you dress up and you light your smoker and you made sugar water if you need that to feed the bees um, the amount of time to caring for one hive or caring for four or two or 12 even it's pretty much the same so just be ready to set aside um, four hours or so monthly per, uh, per bee yard um, the equipment that you are going to need uh, you do gonna want a bee suit of some sort. I really like these uh, meshed bee suits, which are open and the air can flow straight through. Uh, they are thick enough that the bee, uh, the stinger, can't go through them. Um, but especially in Colorado, being so warm and you've been sweating in a bee suit throughout the day. These are awesome when just a little bit of, of wind goes through. If it's cold, you put a layer of clothes underneath it um, and so. Um, you are gonna want gloves and they are specific beekeeping gloves. This is something that I buy new every year. So these are actually a new pair. So, uh, But you wanna want uh, beekeeping gloves and they go all the way over as well. We have uh, two kinds of hive tools here. And this is to grab the frames. I'm gonna show that on a frame. Uh, and this is, uh, I call it a fork. It's a hive tool that you use to break off the boxes. One of these would be enough. This is the very common tool. Uh, you can use this end to pry up frames. Uh, while you would use this end, you can actually grab the frame, but I'm gonna show those two in action. Uh, you're gonna want a smoker. Um, or at least I would recommend you to get a smoker. Um, you burn, I, I burn and there's some different things. Burlap is very common. Um, I do uh, cardboard boxes that we rip off, works great. Um, you use it very little and I only use it certain times I go out, but it's more to just get the bees to go into the hive. And, and so when I put the lid on or I put my feeders on, I don't wanna crush them. It also calms the bees down a little bit. You give them a little bit of smoke. They, it simulates a forest fire and they consume more um, honey to, so they can stay away from their hive if needed to. Uh, and it just kind of makes them a little docile. Um, but you're gonna, gonna want a smoker. Um, Equipment-wise, when it comes to the hive body, 
we're gonna take this beehive apart. Um, but starting from the top and going down, you're gonna have a lid that's gonna cover the, the beehive. This is, there are gonna be two kinds of feeders. And feeder is something they will use when you take their honey. When you harvest the honey from the bees, you wanna give them sugar water. Uh, the sugar water is a substitute for honey and it's to make sure that the bees doesn't starve. Um, so what I use is called a rapid uh, hive feeder. I love these. I think everyone getting into beekeeping should get this straight away. I have um, a different kind of feeder that goes into the to the uh, brood boxes down here. We're going to show that when I come to it. But this thing makes life so easy. You don't have to open up the whole hive. You can just put your sugar water right in here. And the bees can climb up. I actually have a bee robbing from, from my beehive right there, which is kind of fun. Uh, but the bees can come straight up from this opening. And they can take down the sugar water uh, as needed. Uh, but this just makes that you don't have to open up the whole beehive. Uh, I leave these on the beehive uh, throughout the summer, but you could decide, you could take those off as well. You're only gonna use them after harvest. So the box that we come to here, it's a honey super. It's gonna be smaller than the brood boxes. And the brood, the difference between the brood boxes and the honey supers is that you're gonna get the honey that you're harvesting in the honey supers. And I have two here, but uh, depending on where you live, there could be three and four and five, and um, as more that you have uh, would kind of indicate that, you, that the beehive is producing more honey. So it's not a set number on how many um, boxes that you have. Uh, I would normally go out and put two, uh, sorry, two or three per hive. Uh, four in some cases, but rarely that we fill four, uh, at least my locations. Uh, inside, we have frames. And this is a wood frame with beeswax foundation. And this is something that I use when I want to produce honeycomb. So this will become honeycomb. Uh, this is just pure beeswax in the foundation. It looks just like this. And this is unused. This is brand new. Can be good to know. Uh, so this is a wood frame with beeswax foundation. You can get a wood frame with a plastic foundation. Uh, you can get a plastic frame with a, with a beeswax foundation. They come in all kinds of, um, of types. Uh, but that is what I use for honeycomb production, where I cut up honeycomb. This is um, a plastic frame. So the whole unit is one piece. This is what I use for honey production. Uh, the beneficial part with having plastic frames like this is um, that you can reuse them time after time and they don't um, they don't break uh, which is awesome and here you can even see that we have some build out already uh, and we take off the lid and we spin them and just having this build out actually helps the bees because they don't need to rebuild that frame uh, this is a brand new piece and this is how they come uh, make sure when you buy these plastic that they are sprayed with beeswax. Uh, very important, if they're not sprayed with beeswax, the bees will not build on these. And you can smell them when you get it and it will smell with, like beeswax and you know they are. If they, they sell them unsprayed for the beekeeper to spray them themselves, don't do it, it's a mess. It's better to pay someone else to do it. Um, you're not saving much money in doing it yourself. So just don't do it, <laughs> is what I wanna say. So that's gonna be honey supers. Again, that could be three or four or five boxes. Um, between the honey super, and just to show this again, it looks like this.
between the honey supers where the honey is and the way that we make sure that we get honey in these in the honey supers um, and nothing else we have a queen excluder and the queen excluder is just um, it's a net pretty much it will divide the queen from the brood boxes that we now are entering so the queen of the hive is much bigger than the working bees dramatically bigger you can see a difference you can find her because she's bigger she stands out in the hive a worker bee can walk through these uh, slits these openings while the queen being bigger she cannot so the queen is actually trapped in these brood boxes uh, she could go through the entrance of course the foster but she will not be able to go through here and that makes when she running around in these two boxes laying egg um, she's filling up the brood boxes in the bottom and for the worker bees to have somewhere to put honey they have to go through this to lay honey in the boxes the reason that we work with this is that when we go out in the fall to harvest we know that we are not gonna have the queen in the honey supers we know that the queen is somewhere here and it makes life so easy to be able to go out take the frames shake them off in front of the queen uh, you might have a brush um, we use this what we think is very gentle there's a video on that too we're using a leaf blower where we can come in and we can blow off the bees and the bees just fly out and then we can take this we know that the queen is not along these bees and this is ready to go um, so that's the main reason we have a queen excluder if you would opt out and some beekeepers is going to tell you to not have a queen excluder um, when you harvest you're gonna to have to go through the hive you're gonna to have to find the queen and then you can start harvesting your honey uh, but that's why we use this uh, some beekeepers probably gonna say that you produce less honey with a queen excluder um, yeah anyway <laughs> Uh, this is the other kind of feeder. So I showed you the top feeder uh, that was on top of the hive. This is an in-hive feeder. Um, you would put your sugar water in here and it would be sunken into the hive. And you would make sure you have something floating in here so you don't get bees drowning. But it would take the space off a frame. Um, I do not use these because the, you have to open up uh, the hive every time. Um, it's not easy to just go out and feed your bees. Um, so we, I have it here to show you guys what we have. There also is feeders that I never even tried, but I know it's very common uh, in a backyard setting. And it's a mason jar that goes in the, in the entrance of the hive. Uh, I think it works great, uh, it, they seem to work great, um, it's just a quantity for me that you would, could just do s smaller sizes. The top feeder takes so much sugar, water, I can go out two or maybe three times maximum and I can give the bees. While if you have them in your backyard it's not a big deal to go out and work with your bees more frequently. Um, so a mason jar and you would go and fill up the mason jar many days in a row um, it's not a big deal but when we drive between bee yards um, it becomes a big thing to not have to drive uh, more than necessarily so looking into the brood chamber it's gonna there's gonna be frames uh, just as in the honey super but this is where larva is gonna be laid so the queen walks around she puts egg and larva uh, it's gonna be pollen stored here as well uh, same here, you can have a wax foundation, plastic foundation. Uh, this is a wood frame with plastic. And in Colorado, we have two deep 
so you will also see that it's a deeper box um, you can use uh, this full size uh, format for honey but this gets extremely heavy um, to the point when this is full um, you can barely lift it, it you, it's so heavy that I, I wouldn't recommend anyone to do it um, you could use honey super sizes for brew boxes the size itself doesn't matter uh, but there's two kinds of ways of buying bees and if you go to Dakota or um, uh, um, better to be or not to, to be, be or not to be uh, you're gonna get packages and then it doesn't matter but if you get uh, a set of nukes you're gonna get frames with larva and then they're gonna come with this format and then you would need this size and then in the bottom you have an entrance and the entrance it should have ventilation in it so it should be open in the bottom very important to keep any kind of moisture out but that would be the foundation of a beehive uh, bees themselves you can get different queens uh, I we use an Italian hybrid we think they work fairly well uh, in Colorado uh, but there is Buckfast and uh, Italians purebred Italians there is uh, Caucasians uh, and yeah v many kinds of different breeds uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about other kind of bees in the area but an Italian hybrid is what we get um, again if you get any questions I would love to answer them I probably missed a lot that should be commonly used or should be known but let me know and I will answer them in a second video. Thank you guys.